Hey, look at this. June 2021, digital dealer, Tampa, Florida. Man, we have all just come off of a crazy year. We've all lived through a worldwide pandemic. We've seen things like mandatory dealership shutdowns, an acceleration of digital retailing activities on our dealership website, and how that's transitioned into our dealership showrooms. We've all experienced new vehicle record sales, hyperinflation for used vehicle values, chip shortages, plant closings, and now we're facing summer with potentially the lowest uh, uh, inventory levels in recorded history. What a crazy time to be in automotive. Digital dealer, I'm super excited to be uh, uh, being able to ha have the opportunity for a presentation, a virtual presentation, to talk about how you can hack your dealership website to increase lead conversion. So today, my session is going to be broken up into three different areas. We're going to take a little bit of time and go over some basic information. This is going to be information that you probably already are aware of, but I want to cover some of this information to give you some more context to the tools that we're going to be able to utilize as we go through and hack your dealership website. We're also going to talk a little bit about the science behind the design of a VDP and some simple changes you can make to kind of hack the psychology on how users see and interact with your dealership's vehicle display pages. The primary section of this uh, presentation is going to be section three, and that's where we're going to, we're going to be setting up multivariant testing and how you can actually utilize that to hack your website to increase lead conversion. Then what we're going to be able to see is how that will actually play out in real in the real world where you can make some very small changes that are going to make some incredibly impactful changes on the amount of lead conversion and really realistically I can show you how some minor changes can double the amount of leads that you get from your dealership website without spending any more money without spending uh, 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 a, a, without adding any additional technology on your dealerships uh, website so the first thing I'm going to do is let me just tell you a little bit about myself. So I started in the car business when I was very young. My father was in the automotive industry, ran some dealerships up in the Midwest, in North Dakota, Minnesota uh, for many years. Back about 25 years ago, I moved down to the Florida area, started a family-owned used vehicle dealership, operated that for, uh, for many years before making the transition and deciding to turn to close that dealership and started working at the local Toyota dealership. The large volume Toyota dealership, the first month I was there, we sold over 700 uh, vehicles. I spent over a decade of my career at that dealership transitioning from many different positions within the dealership from a new vehicle salesperson used vehicle salesperson. I started an early internet sales department in the late 90s, a business development center that was responsible for over 250 vehicle sales ultimately going on to be the general sales manager of that dealership and then a few other dealerships in the Tampa Bay uh, metro market, finishing my automotive retail career in an open point toy to dealership and delivering over a thousand cars in the first 90 days from opening the door uh, opening day. Uh, loved my time in automotive retail and then from that transitioned and started this company just over a decade ago with the goal to develop technologies to help dealers convert more leads and drive more showroom traffic and help them sell more cars. Along the way, I have learned and developed uh, some techniques and some tips that we can utilize to help you convert more leads from your dealership website, again, without adding any technology to your, to your website uh, or any additional marketing dollars. So truly hacking your dealership website to increase lead conversion. So let's talk a little bit about why we should be 
increasing lead conversion on your dealership website. Is there really a need to increase lead, lead conversion? Well, according to the Google Dealer Guidebook that came out February of this year, 2021, Guidebook 2.0, they said that 74% uh, of purchasers did not submit a online lead action, and that was actually up from 68% in 2015. So over the last 10 years, lead conversion percentages has actually gone down and not gone up. But at the same time, 65% of consumers discover their purchasing dealership online. So this really shows that more people are use, using digital, they're using dealership websites and other uh, website technologies to discover what dealerships they want to do business with. But when it comes right down to converting to a lead on a dealership website, they're not doing it. So what we want to be able to do is figure out some uh, techniques that you can utilize to make it more appealing to consumers when they visit your dealership website and convert into a lead. So really what we're able to do with that is to move a customer from being an anonymous website browser into an engaged, identified consumer. So once that lead conversion takes place, that's when we're gonna get that customer's contact information to somebody at the dealership so we can have dialogue and enter that customer into the sales process. So it's really, that is where the magic happens on your dealership website. So we're gonna use some proven techniques, some psychology, and some, uh, we're gonna set up some tests on how you are able to make these changes test to see if they work, and then uh, uh, continue on with additional tests and additional optimization, ultimately to get more leads from your dealership's uh, website. So let's, uh, so section one, let's talk a little bit about um, uh, the, the, the basics. Okay, so we're talking about your dealership's website. And on your dealership's website, you're gonna have areas where you are just providing information to the consumer, whether that is going to be your About Us page, whether that's gonna be a Contact Us page, whether that's gonna be maps and directions, whether that's your team, whether that is specials that you have posted on your dealership website. Uh, so this is the areas of your dealership website where customers are gonna be looking for information. There's also different areas on your dealership website that is gonna be about exploration, where customers can explore different vehicles that they might have interest in buying. Uh, or maybe they are looking at exploring how to be able to engage and schedule an appointment at your dealership. Uh, maybe they want to explore how they can finance a vehicle. Um, and then other areas of your website is going to be about conversion. All of these things are extremely important, but we're going to be focusing on the areas of conversion. Now, so to do that, um, we're going to be utilizing some different uh, industry tools that are available to you. Some of these tools are going to be free. Some of these tools are you, you are already very familiar with and you're already utilizing on a daily basis. And some of them might be new. So this is the basics of this. So I might go into some elementary type of uh, explanations in these tools, but I think it's important from a foundation uh, standpoint. Um, so this is section one. We're talking about Google Analytics. Google An Analytics is a platform or a tool set that is provided by Google to anybody that has a website that allows the website owner to be able to track uh, and collect information about activity on that dealership's website. The way that it works, of course, we have a little snippet of code that goes onto the dealership's website. Now we're gonna be talking about universal analytics. We're not gonna be talking about like the new improved Google Analytics 4 because they do things a little bit differently in a post-cookie world. But we're gonna be talking about the traditional 
universal analytics as it has been uh, for a very, very long time. So with that little snippet of code that goes onto your website, the, uh, that is going to collect information when, when users visit your dealership website, what they do on that dealership, uh, uh, during that dealership session, and what activities the customer takes. It does it every time that, that the, uh, a page loads on your website, and they're going to segment that information into a session. Uh, we're going to be able to find out uh, things like what brought the customer to your dealership website, what they did on your website, what pages they viewed on your dealership website, how long they were on your uh, dealership website, and they're going to be able to track different uh, uh, goals, events, and conversions. So goals, I, so goals and events, I like to think about like this. Um, if you're running a race and you're running a, 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 a hurdle, uh, every time that you jump a hurdle, that is going to be like an event. So you might have multiple events, multiple hurdles that you're going to take, that a user is going to take while visiting your dealership website during their session. And then at the very end, it, you, the customer has the ability to complete a goal that might be like, you know, running and finishing the race. So we're going to utilize these goals and events on your dealership website, and we're going to be focusing on conversion. Now, the way that Google Analytics works with that snippet of code on your dealership website, it's going to take all that information. It's going to save it to the Google Analytics cookie. It's ultimately going to send that back to the Google Analytics platform where they're going to take that information. They're going to process that. They're going to save it into the Google Analytics database, and then they're going to generate reports. They're going to generate key performance indicators uh, so you can look at things like uh, pages per session, bounce rate, other key performance indicators uh, that you have set up on your website, and then you can use that as insights to guide decision making uh, for maybe uh, the traffic that you have coming into your dealership website or what activities the customer is going to take on your dealership website and look for areas where you can improve or optimize uh, your website. Now, uh, moving on, let's go ahead and look at the next uh, piece of technology that we're going to be utilizing from a basic standpoint. So Google Tag Manager is a technology that Google came out with about 10 years ago. And it's kind of an add-on to uh, Google Analytics. But what Google Tag Manager allows you to do is to create what they call a container. And this container is another snippet of code that goes onto your dealership website that is going to contain other snippets of code. So we might have the Google Analytics code inside that container. And then inside of the Google Tag Manager, we can create different uh, rules to be able to determine when we want these different um, uh, these different snippets of code to be triggered uh, or on what pages or uh, other characteristics for example maybe by geolocation we only want certain things to fire uh, or be triggered uh, uh, by certain consumers as they visit your dealership's uh, website. Uh, so uh, uh, with Google Tag Manager, you have the ability to add different elements that goes into these containers. You can update those outside of your dealership website, right inside of Google uh, Tag Manager, and make these live changes without having to contact anybody at your website provider. Uh, and it really ultimately giving you the control to modify these things without having to know how to code uh, or adding different things to the header or the footer on different pages of your dealership website, really making it a lot easier to make these uh, additions, updates, and really controlling what, what uh, gets, gets fired on your dealership's website.
Now, additionally, we're going to talk about a new technology, a new tool, and some of you, some of uh, the digital market, uh, di digital marketers out there, uh, maybe some of the more savvy dealership personnel. Maybe you're familiar with Google Optimize. Maybe this, this isn't anything that's new um, uh, to you, uh, but this is a newer product from Google, part of the kind of Google Analytics family of products. But Google Optimize allows you to create tests to measure different activities and then optimize your website based on the, uh, the results of these tests. Uh, so for example, what we're, what we're, what we're going to be looking at today is how you can create these multivariant tests on your dealership's website, specifically a VDP, and then we can see how people interact with these tests and determine which is better. Instead of just guessing which is better, we're going to let the data guide our decision making. Uh, so this is going to be inside the Google Optimize platform. We're going to be talking about that today as well. All right, so let's get into section two, the science behind VDP design. In my career, one of the things I've focused on is the ability to increase conversion on a dealership's website. And I do understand that a lot of it does come down to the way that consumers or people are going to interact with what they see uh, on the VDP or on the website. So looking at different ways to be able to kind of hack the activity that a customer can take has led me to do a lot of research in uh, human psychology. So let's take a little bit closer look at some stuff that really makes sense on things that you can do to optimize the design of your dealership website and to understand why uh, it's important to do it this way. So uh, based on an article by Susan Weincheck, uh, she talks about the fusiform facial area. and. In the basic sense, what this this means is your area of your face, your eyes, your mouth, your nose, uh, that we as human beings are genetically designed to look for that shape and to uh, and to look at it first before we see anything else. And because we have that psychology built in, it's important to understand that if uh, that there is a like a psychological need for uh, for users to be looking for that shape on your dealership website, and if they do, that's where their attention is going to go first. So that's what we want to do: is can we kind of hack this FFA to be able to drive the customer's focus in a specific area on your dealership website? So you can see right here right there, the first thing that you're going to do is your eyes are going to automatically go to this person's face. So that's just a, psychology, a, a, a psychological need or uh, the way that our brains are hardwired. And then if you kind of go back to when I first brought this page up, from that face, what happened next is your eyes went over to the left and it went down to start now with that CTA. Now, the reason I know that is because the psychological behavior that uh, users or consumers, people are going to make. So the first thing that's going to happen is to understand that there is this fusiform facial area. And if we really think about it, a vehicle has also that fusiform facial area, right? Um, so, uh, and based on the studies, the psychological studies, uh, even inanimate objects like a car can stimulate that FFA. Just like the front of a vehicle does have something that looks like eyes and a mouth, which, which create that face. Uh, so the first thing that's going to happen is when your customer loads up a VDP, automatically they're going to go to the face of that, uh, of that vehicle. That's where their eyes are going to go first. So understanding that and then understanding what potentially a user is going to do next is can really start to guide how we design your VDP. Uh, so what ends up happening with the same uh, FFA uh, uh, psychological need or desire is if that face is looking away, 
automatically your eyes are going to go to whatever that face is looking at. So in this case, it's going to be looking in the direction of where that vehicle is pointing. So as you're building your VDP, you have to identify what vehicle do you want in that primary position, and then where is that vehicle face looking, and that is where you want to place your primary call to action. So it's going to be that general area that that face is looking at is where we're going to want to put what we like to call our CTA button block. Uh, so inside that uh, button block, now we want to further utilize psychology to help us guide the design of this VDP. Um, so the preattential area of the visual cortex um, there are special areas of the visual cortex that processes visual information very quickly. These are called pre-attention areas because they process information faster than someone may realize they're even noticed something visually. So this is all happening like automatically, uh, almost like a pre-attention uh, as it states there. So within the visual cortex, there are four areas called V1, 2, 3, and 4. These are pre-attention areas of the visual cortex, and they are uh, 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 dedicated to very small and specific visual elements. So that's what we want to utilize in hacking your VDP. So the first thing of these is going to be the orientation. So automatically what ended up happening is you went uh, to looking at that one thing right there that's a little bit uh, crooked, right? That's what you saw first. Um, so keeping that in mind is you have one thing that's different than the others. Also, size and shape is going to be one of those pre-attention um, uh, modifiers that we can use to draw the attention to, uh, uh, to, to what we want the customer to look at, which in this case is going to be the primary call to action, which we're going to talk about in just a minute. Another one is color, uh, meaning it's a little bit different. It is different than the rest, even though they're all circle shapes, they're all the same size. The uh, red ball is a little bit different, and you are automatically going to uh, find that first because it's different, uh, and so we're going to utilize that pre-attention in our primary CTA. Movement is another one that you can utilize to grab someone's attention. So understanding how this all works together is how we can design your, uh, your VDP. Uh, but keep in mind, you can't have this all happening at the same time. So if that ends up happening, nothing is going to attract the attention. And this is what I see time and time again on dealership website VDPs is that there are so many competing calls to action that nothing uh, is going to be the primary CTA. And then every vendor is going to try to create a bigger or more distracting or more page takeover uh, button than anybody else so they can prove to the dealer that their product is better. And that's uh, how VDP design usually gets uh, made. So I'm going to recommend that you kind of take this holistic approach on how you can optimize your VDP so you don't end up with everything happening uh, the, uh, at the same time or in, uh, uh, in the same way so you actually lose attraction instead of gaining attraction or attention. So this is the area that we're going to be focusing on. We're going to be adding to this area and creating um, kind of a stepped approach to how we structure the uh, CTAs. First thing, we wanted to focus on that area right there, and that's where we're gonna put what we call our primary CTA. This is gonna be the largest, and it's gonna be the most dominant color difference, uh, and that's where the face of the vehicle is gonna be pointing. Now for a primary CTA, what I would recommend is to utilize uh, a simple website lead form that is going to be something like unlock my 
my best price or get my best price or you know request an internet price or whatever you're doing as the simplest but usually most effective call to action on your dealership website. Uh, that it could even be buy now, but we just want to be, this to be the standard primary call to action uh, on your dealership website uh, that is going to get that customer to convert. And like I said, that can be unlock pri price or get best price. The same CTA that we've had in automotive for 20 years. Now, um, as we move into uh, these different CTAs, because we don't want to just have one, we want to be able to have multiple engagement points for consumers uh, to be able to act in different ways. So uh, that's one other challenge I see dealers uh, uh, do all the time, is not having enough tools on their dealership website to provide the opportunity to interact with different consumers. Now, so as customers follow their purchase journey and depending on where they're at or what's most important to them, we wanna be able to have different tools to be able to engage with those customers. So if a customer is a very payment driven, configure my deal or get my payment is going to be a very is going to be a good a call to action that would be like a digital retailing technology or if a customer isn't sure they can qualify for a loan maybe get pre-qualified or, uh, uh, or request an application um, or maybe even you know, get my free credit score might be something that you want to utilize uh, to attract those types of consumers. Um, uh, and maybe you have a customer that the most important thing to them is to find out what their vehicle is worth so they can find out if they can trade it in. So having a call to action for that is going to be very important. Or maybe even a customer that wants to make an appointment at the dealership for maybe taking and looking at vehicles or maybe taking a test drive or something like that, that's another uh, funnel uh, 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 or process that we want to include in a call to action. But what we don't want to have is every one of those being exactly the same size and shape and trying to grab the attention of the customer as they visit that, that uh, VDP. So what we're going to do now is we want to determine what is going to be uh, that secondary call to action. And in, in, in the way that we're recommending hacking your dealership website, this is going to be smaller than the primary call to action. It's going to be less distinct in color, and it's going to be down. So just as consumers or users that come to your dealership website, they're going to want to go from left to right, especially here in the U.S. and reading English. English, that's the way that we're accustomed to going. So we're taking the vehicle's face, going from left to right. We see that area, that we see the primary CTA. If we can grab the customer's attention and move them to unlock the price or get their best price, they can do it. Or they can go down and look at that less distinct secondary call to action. And we think there should only be one secondary call to action. But then from that point, what's going to happen is we're going to move into ancillary calls to action. So this might be those different activities. This is going to be even smaller again than the, than the primary and the secondary. It's going to be less distinct in color. And again, that's going to be down from... Uh, the, the, the customer's visual uh, cue, right? So it's, we see the face, we go over, we see the button block, and we see the different ways that we can, we can interact and uh, we can call attention to these uh, CTAs that's on your dealership's website. Now, another thing that's going to stand out is going to be very large numbers. So we can even think about this like when you go to Google Analytics and you see the key performance indicators, they're going to have eight or nine different large numbers uh, that's going to be on, uh, 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 on those reports. And that's where your attention is going to go. It's going to see those big numbers. You're going to want to do the same thing with your price. Um, and this is also something that I see a lot on 
uh, on vehicle display pages is that a dealer will have a bunch of equally sized um, listings of either like the first price or the MSRP, then the discount, another discount, maybe a rebate, and then the, the ultimate price. Uh, but all of them are like visually equal where we want the customer's um, uh, attention to go to one value. This could be a payment or it could be a price, um, but it should be the one large number that's going to draw attention uh, to that. So really within the pre-attention uh, of getting to a VDP, the customer is going to see the car, see the primary call to action, see the price, and then they can make once their attention actually kicks in, then they can make a decision what's going to be, be next. But we've already kind of accomplished um, within a split second what, we, what we've wanted to with uh, those uh, CTAs. Now, this is kind of a really cool way to illustrate the importance of uh, attention. So I'm just going to go ahead and play this video for you real quick, and then we're going to come back and we're going to uh, discuss it. This is a test. How many times does the white team pass the rubber band ball? Go! If you answered 13 passes, you are correct. But did you see the Black Belt Gorilla? Go! your marketing team doesn't miss the obvious with love that example I think that is something that really illustrates um, how your brain works and where your attention goes and if you were like me you did not see the gorilla the first time through and you were shocked that there was a gorilla there the first time uh, because you're focusing on something else so what also this uh, really illustrates is that um, I'll just read it real quick. It says, if a UX or user experience designer wants to design everything a user can experience, they miss the point of attention. UX isn't about creating a perfect world. It's about eliminating everything that competes with your goals and user goals. Good UX is reductive, not expansive. So to me, what that means is that when you're creating the design of your VDP, utilizing less is going to give you more. Uh, maybe it's going to look cooler if you have a whole bunch of uh, photo collage up on top of your VDP, but is that more effective? And what's more important, to look cooler or to convert more leads and provide a, a, a more engaging experience. And I mean, I can't tell you the, the amount of times that I go to dealership websites and see all of these competing calls to actions, whether it's a chat pop up or it's something coming o over from the side and then every page I have to go to, I have to close it, uh, everything, you know exactly what I'm talking about because you hate it as well. So what we want to do is we want to figure out how you can use good UX design to provide a reductive experience that's going to be optimized for increased conversion, right? Good use of white space, understanding why one primary CTA is important, but having the ability to have those tools in a secondary and ancillary visual way. 
uh, all good, important stuff. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the actual steps that you need to take to hack your dealership website by creating multivariant testing inside of Google and uh, Google Optimize. But let's just take a minute and understand what we're looking at doing. So if, if we look at uh, typical primary CTAs on dealership websites, they're probably going to look something like this here, right? Uh, whether it's going to be make us an offer or see our best price instantly, get e-price, schedule a test drive, buy online, get today's out the door price, get best price. Some of these might be uh, animated, um, but a lot of different ways to try to get your customer's attention and get them to click that button. So today we've talked about utilizing the fusiform with the face and the direction where the customer's eyes are gonna go and then creating the primary, secondary, and ancillary calls to action. But then the question is, what should that call to action be? And again, this is what I see happens to dealers all the time is the way that they do tests is they're going to say at the end of the month, well, we didn't get as many leads last month by using get e price. Why don't we change that to see our best price instantly and see how it goes? And that's kind of how the conversation uh, happens in how they change their CTAs. Or it's, let's get rid of this button here and see if that has a better effect on the other buttons that we have. Um, so there's a lot of kind of shooting from the hip on making decisions on what their CTAs should be, what colors they should be, and the message inside those CTAs. So really, it does become what works best. And instead of just making it up or shooting from the hip, why don't we let science or the data drive our decision making? And that's where Google Optimize comes in. Now, with our partners, Mighty Hive, uh, uh, in the past, we've created a case study around using Google Analytics, I'm sorry, Google Optimize, to optimize specifically the buttons that, are, that is on dealership websites. And with that, th this is back from 2018, uh, late 2018, so it's a few years old, but based on the test that we did by just changing the button text and the button colors, what we found out is that we were able to get a 132% increase in, uh, in conversions. We were able to get a 183% uh, increase uh, on tablet conversions and some other increases. We'll share this link so you can read through it, but I wanted to uh, explain that the tests that you create can be very simple. It can be from the text that's inside the button to the button color itself. And then from there, you can determine, well, you know, what is, uh, what's the results of that? So what I'm gonna share with you is how you can create a simple test on your dealership website, utilizing Google Optimize, and just making some minor changes to uh, the, your primary CTA. And in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add one word into the CTA from get best price to get your best price. What do you think? Do you think that we're gonna get a big difference just by making that text change? Or do you think that green is gonna be a better CTA versus red? Uh, is that gonna be a better CTA? So instead of just doing an A, B test, we can do a multivariant test where we're gonna have four variations. The standard, uh, which is gonna be get best price in a green button. And then we're gonna have three variations. One of them is gonna be get best price in a red button. One is gonna be get your best price in a green button and uh, get your best price in a red button. Pretty cool little test. I'm curious to find out what happens here. So what I'm gonna do now is let's go ahead and I've created um, 
the, uh, the, the setup process inside of Google Optimize. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share screenshots so I can kind of talk through these steps. And then you can also replay this video and see exactly what I'm doing for the step-by-step. -step. Uh, but it's, it's a very simple process. The first thing that we're going to do is we are going to uh, go to uh, uh, optimize.google.com and we're going to create our first experience. Let's go. Click the button. You know, click that button right there. That's going to open up. It's going to bring us to the next step. And this is where we're just going to name the uh, experience. We're going to apply a name. And then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, change what type of uh, test that we're going to want to run. In this case, we're going to do a multivariant test. Uh, and then um, the then we add, we add a name for that variant test. In this case, I went with variant color change. Uh, that's going to be section A. And we go ahead and click done. Uh, and then we can also add a specific geography of where we want these um, tests to take place. So maybe you only want to do a test in a certain area, maybe uh, to do a limited test and not affect all of your traffic in your test. And that's actually what we did for our test here. We just picked one city um, and uh, we ran uh, the test just in one city and didn't make m major changes across all of the uh, dealerships uh, uh, traffic. Uh, then as we kind of go through uh, step by step, we can link a property based in Google Analytics. You just uh, grab here. And if your username, um, if you're using your Google account, which you'll have to, uh, and you have access to your Google Analytics account, um, then you're able to uh, associate that Google Analytics account inside with Google Optimize. So it's your Google account. If you don't have one, you should create one. If you don't have administrative access to your Google Analytics account, you should get it. Um, if, you have, uh, and if you have any questions about that, hit me up. I'm happy to, to, to help you with your vendor to get that information. But then you have that information and you can sync the two, which will be important. Um, once you have them uh, set up, we're going to want to uh, select the objective. Uh, the objective, we can create a custom one, but I actually recommend uh, choosing from a list of already created uh, goals that you have on your dealership website, which typically would be a, uh, in this case, primary CTA form fill thank you page. So that's going to be the goal once a customer actually gets in and completes the lead conversion. So that's what we're going to utilize for the primary objective. So we just select that goal uh, from uh, the, uh, the list that is provided once you link up the Google Analytics account. And then from this is you, so that, so most of the setup uh, the initial steps of the setup are done. Now what we're going to want to do is make sure that we have the Google Optimize script installed onto your dealership's website page. And we're going to do that by using Google Tag Manager. Click the uh, check installation button right there. It's going to pull up the dealership website. It's going to show um, if it is installed properly or not. If it is red, it means it's not installed properly, uh, but they give you the ability to go through a kind of wizard to get it set up properly. So you can click that link right there, uh, and then it will bring you to uh, the uh, installation page, the instructions. Right here, it's going to give you the script that's necessary to run on your dealership's website page. You could add this natively if you want to in your website backend portal, or as we're recommending it, you drop it right into Google Tag Manager so you don't have to actually have access to the backend system. So you just copy that little snippet of code right there. You open up Google Tag Manager, uh, and then you uh, create a new tag and then each one of those tags is a container where you can pop in that script uh, so you just walk through the process uh, where you can name the uh, where, where you actually have to choose the tag type they have a special type just for Google optimize so it works hand in hand 
Uh, once you have that created, uh, you have to name it. I would suggest just naming it Google Optimize so you know what it is. Uh, so you create that tag folder inside of Google Tag Manager. You select the Google Analytics property um, from, uh, from the dropdown right there. Very simple. Oops. And then uh, from here, you can determine, do you want the Google Tag Manager uh, 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 script to fire on every page on your dealership website. We actually want to limit it to just being on your vehicle display pages. So based on the URL uh, itself is what we're going to determine when we want to fire the Google Optimize script. Um, so we can do it uh, that way right inside the steps. Uh, so we can submit the changes. I like to make sure that we're documenting everything properly. Uh, so putting in a version description, we have the script uh, installed now, and then we are going to publish that, uh, uh, that version of Tag Manager. So just a little bit more context there. Google Tag Manager gives you the ability to create these tags. Inside the tags, you can put the scripts. Once you create that new version, of the entire tag, you publish it, and then once once that gets published, it goes live to the site with ever even having to go to the website. And once it publishes live, uh, uh, then you're uh, able to um, see that tracker actually running on your dealership's uh, website. Some additional information here, if you ever get stuck in the steps that you need to take, you can just Google it and you have uh, access to the support pages right on uh, google.com, which really provides great information, videos on how to configure and optimize tags and tag manager or the tests and optimize uh, that is available to you as well. So still inside of Google Tag Manager here, um, now that we have created that tag, we've uh, published it, now we can go in and start to modify uh, how we are going to uh, fire that uh, Google Optimize script. In this case, we're gonna um, uh, 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 scroll down, go to tag firing options, uh, once per event or once per page. In this case, we're gonna go once per page. And then once that is published and it is saved, uh, you can go back to Google Optimize, refresh, and then if everything is installed correctly and it's on the Google Tag Manager and that's published properly, it is going to show green, meaning that it is optimized, uh, that Google Optimize is installed on the dealership's website, which then gives you the ability to start the tests. So as I kind of go through here again, now we're back into Google Optimize. We have the Google Optimize script running on the dealership's website. Now we can start to uh, create the test itself. And in this case, we're gonna go to uh, how we are going to configure it. We're gonna configure it based on specific URLs. Um, so you can create a rule to either include or exclude pages on your website. In this, in this case, we are going to exclude on SRPs, uh, but we're going to include on VDPs. So we can, we can find out what specific values are in the URL, such as uh, new vehicle or uh, uh, vehicles slash new with a dash, and then that gives me a, a, a little snippet of text that's in the URL that's going to be unique to a VDP. Uh, so we add that in as a rule to only fire on URLs that includes that text. So now what we're going to do is we are going to um, create the different variants of the tests. And this is actually really the cool part where again, you don't need to have any coding experience to be able to do this, but we're gonna want to create uh, the different variations. Once you go in and uh, hit um, create, start, uh, it's gonna 
open up that URL that you have uh, specified in Google Optimize, and it's going to give you this overlay where you can take your mouse and you can hover over different elements on the page. And then when you hover over different elements, it's going to you can click and select it, and then from this little control box right here, you can make your variant changes. So if I scroll down again, you can see I can hover over and select this primary CTA button, which is in this case it's right under the uh, the MSRP in large text, and in this case it says unlock price. Now I can change that um, to uh, 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 to make a variation of the uh, the text. Uh, and as I go through, I can go through and make those modifications right here. I can uh, change the font text, the font style. Uh, all of those things are available for me to uh, modify right in that control panel. So once you have that and you hit save and then you start that test, what you're going to be able to do um, is, let me get back over here, um, then you'll be able to either, uh, then you're going to allow the Google Optimize test to run. Usually they like to have two full weeks to be able to run that test. Um, I did it in a week uh, for this uh, test right here, and that's exactly the test uh, results that I was able to get. But this is where kind of the rubber meets the road, right? So after... Um, we had 1,700 sessions, 1,703 sessions over a seven-day period, and it was very clear that uh, there was a clear winner in my overall uh, test. So the original variant, which was uh, unlock your price, uh, or I'm sorry, it was um, it was either get uh, get best price or get your best price. Um, uh, the original variant we converted at 1.9 percent, so we got we got uh, 10 leads over that seven-day period in the small geo-restricted uh, area that we uh, tested. So 1.9 percent lead conversion—that's probably pretty good. Average is about 1.6, 1.7, so that's higher than average. But we also have found out that there was three other variants in my test. My next one, which was the best performing test, um, which, in, which was the same color, the green color, but just adding one word different, and that was adding your. Um, that ended up converting at 4.09%. So more than double the conversion rate by adding one word, keeping the same, um, the same color button. Uh, the other variant was going to be keep the same text, but in red, that actually converted at 3.02%, getting us 12 leads, uh, lead conversions. And then the next one uh, was uh, the other variation, which added the word and changed the color. That was at 3.22% uh, lead conversion. So what we found out by doing this test that the original variant, which was the green, without having the word your in the CTA prefer, performed the worst and the best performing uh, variation was the same color but adding one word, but the other two variants um, would have been uh, even better, you know, 50% better uh, improvement over. So in this video, we have covered um, all three steps, uh, all three sections, kind of gave you a good basic overview of your dealership website, of Google uh, Analytics, Google Tag Manager, Google Optimize. We went into the psychology of the design of a VDP, utilizing the face of the car, where that's pointing, generating an area of where you want to put your a button block for your CTAs with the primary, secondary, and ancillary CTAs. Then moved in creating a multivariant test to be able to create real tests in test 
uh, real variance and let the data drive to drive the de de determination and the decision making instead of saying let's try this to see what happens best. So now you have the ability to go into Google Optimize, set up a multivariant test, change different button placements, different colors, different text messages. You can swap out images all very easy to do right in the Google uh, Optimize interface. I really have appreciated the time uh, to be able to create this content for Digital Dealer. Thank you for accepting my uh, submission to participate in the virtual session for Digital Dealer. And please enjoy the rest of your time for the Digital Dealer virtual sessions or your time here in my new hometown, Tampa, Florida.